What is up YouTube? What do you think of my new haircut? But don't worry, we're not gonna be talking about my hair. So the end of the year is coming. I know we still have two more months, but I'm already quite sure that I won't be reviewing any more alters this year. If this is the first time you see one of my videos, I'm TD Miller. I'm a big alter fanboy and I love reviewing their shoes. I do try to sprinkle in some other running related content, but those just don't get the views. And most people really come to my videos just because of my alter reviews and comparisons. So I'm happy that you've joined. Today, I want to talk about the Ultra 20 2023 releases. I must be honest, I have been running in quite some models that were released back in 2022 this year as well. But as these are the latest models, I'm just going to keep it with them. I will mention every now and then which models I have been running in, but they're not all on the table. These are the six models of 2023 that I have tested and reviewed. There are a couple that I've skipped just because I know that I won't be enjoying them. But let's just get into the shoes right now. So the first would be the Lone Peak 7 that was released early in the year. I remember when they were released ultra announced that they updated the max track to make it more grippy the max track has definitely improved compared to the previous version so far i've already done 115 kilometers in them that's not because i don't like them it's just because there were other ultras that i preferred at the time mainly the olympus 5 or the mont blanc i can't say that they're a bad shoe but definitely not a shoe that i have been running that often in if i were to go for something more minimalistic i would go for the superior when i want a little bit more cushion i would just jump over the lone peak and go for the tim or olympus i don't need the extra space in the power box but it's nice to have with the lone Peak 8 coming out in January. I don't know how much more kilometers I'll be putting into them. I may just downgrade them to just a regular hiking shoe. So did I like them? Yes, but I just didn't run that much in them. Next would be the Rivera 3. The Rivera 3 also got released early on this year. I've done about 330 kilometers in them. I must admit I've been running in them way more than I expected to. They were competing with my Torrent 6s and when I felt they needed replacing, I kind of just stuck with the Rivera. They were both 28 millimeters. For me, that's kind of a sweet spot. I like it. Definitely a nice daily trainer, something where you can pick up the pace or just have like an easy long run. Although I would prefer a little bit more space and Alto didn't send me the Torrent 7 until a few weeks ago. So that's why I just kept the Rivera and they were definitely my favorite shoe of 2023. Next would be the Superior 6. So the Superior got released around the same time as the Outroad. I decided to buy them myself, mainly for two reasons. One, because it felt awkward asking Ultra for free shoes the whole time, but also I wanted to stay real. So I decided to buy them myself with my own money, full price. And they are a shoe that I'm really enjoying. I also like running in long distance in them at the moment. I feel that my calves and feet have become a little bit weakened over the past few months. So I decided to go a little bit more minimalistic in the trails. So Superior 6, now at around 100 kilometers, a shoe that I'm enjoying. No idea if we can expect a Superior 7 next year. As I just mentioned, the Outroad also got released last summer. I have the impression that they firmed up the midsole. It's a little bit more reactive compared to the predecessor. Also shoe, I've only done 100 kilometers in them so far. We're gonna have to see if we can expect a third edition next year. And then a few months had passed and finally Ultra sent me the Torrent 7. So the Torrent 7, they bumped up to 30 millimeter stack height. Definitely looks like a dad shoe. It's a nice, comfortable daily trainer. Also something where I could feel like I could pick up the pace, but it's not made for that, at least in my impression. I really like the extra space around the toe box, primarily for my long run, where I just don't know, am I gonna be running two hours, two and a half hours? I would just wear them and know that my feet will be comfortable during the whole run. But so far, just 50 kilometers. I can't give a full review just yet. Then comes the latest addition to my lineup, and that would be the Ultra forward experience. Controversial topic, four millimeter drop. So from heel to toe, there's a four millimeter drop. First time I've run in a shoe with a drop in the past three years. The first few runs, I remember really enjoying them. They, they feel nice and comfortable. You don't notice the drop immediately. However, after a couple of runs, I'm starting to notice a couple of like pains. My ankles feel a little bit stiff, my calves, my hips even, my knees. Something that I don't notice in other ultras. I can only assume it's the drop or it's the massive stack height of 32 in the heel and 28 in the forefoot. And because I over pronate it does kind of get uncomfortable i'm going to give them a couple more runs i might reach 100 kilometers for a full review but i'm not wild about the forward experience i must say but again super comfortable if you don't like zero drop they're definitely a good alternative recently the alta via 2 has been released that's not a shoe that i will be testing and reviewing simply because i didn't like the first version i know they've updated the midsole to make it a little bit softer but with that massive stack height i just don't need more max cushioned running shoes these are not all the shoes that i've been running in 2023 
I still absolutely love the Vanish Tempo. I still race in the Vanish Carbon. We can expect the Vanish Carbon 2 early next year, maybe around spring. I also still race in the Mont Blanc. The Mont Blanc Boa is the one that I go for. We can also expect a new version of the Mont Blanc, the Mont Blanc Carbon, so a carbon plated trail running shoe. I am kind of afraid of the price. I think it's going to be around $260. So if you're thinking of getting a carbon plated trail running shoe, it might get a little bit expensive next year. Of course, I'll not be saying much about the Timp. I have been running in the Timp 4, which I've run about 100 kilometers in. Again, it's a shoe that I would jump over because I really enjoyed the Olympus 5. Early next year, we can finally expect the Tim 5 to come out and this side with a Vibram outsole. As for the Escalante, the Escalante 3, I really enjoyed. However, I noticed that I've actually been using it as a casual shoe. I'm guessing that we can see an update of the Escalante next year as well. Still no news about the Escalante Racer. I heard that in the spring, we can expect another colorway. In a few weeks, there will be the running event again and I'm sure that Alter will announce a few more models that we can expect in 2024. And I'm pretty sure that we can expect more shoes with a heel drop, maybe a trail version, hopefully a shoe with a stack, because I'm not a fan of the trend of more cushioned running shoes. I would really like to see a little bit more minimalistic running shoes in 2024. How about you? Which shoes in 2023 have you enjoyed? How about you let me know in the comments down below. If you have any questions about any of these shoes, also leave me a comment. I'm always happy to talk about Ultra. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.